Well, and I think that, you know, when we think about the industries kind of on the forefront of using this, as you touched on them, you know, manufacturing, utilities, um, airports, ports, the mining and the process industry, you know, there's also other applications that maybe some of us have even experienced it and not known about it. For instance, I know that there's been a lot of work in um, private 5G networks for arenas and sports venues. And, you know, part of that focus is sort of bringing the fan engagement level up. And, you know, we've got a, we've got a fan base these days who are, you know, adept at digital content creation. And many of those enthusiasts have moved beyond the interest in just, you know, taking a photo while they're at an event and uploading it. And they really want to be, you know, shooting video, creating video, doing all different kinds of things. You know, when you think about it, the way we use our devices today is so much different, even than it was five years ago. You know, and in this world, five years is a really long time. So I think that when you're thinking about, you know, the applications for private 5G networks, it really expands beyond um, what you might think, you know? Oh, yes. I mean, there's just a a host of possibilities. And this is similar to what we witnessed with LTE when it was first built out. Nobody could predict Uber. You know, we've touched on this before. And the same thing applies to uh, private 5G networking. And there's also work from home scenarios. Uh, There is, you know, any smart uh, facility that includes smart arenas uh, where uh, there is a uh, application of uh, private 5G networking. And I I think this is all very exciting. And it's also uh, correlating to, you know, follow the money, you know, or follow the organization chart. You know, we're seeing uh, organizations like Ericsson and Nokia literally uh, coming out with their own units dedicated exclusively to this. Right. You know, for example, you know, Ericsson, uh, private 5G, uh, and Nokia, you know, private 5G, uh, and so forth. And so, in fact, uh, Nokia actually has what is called uh, digital automation cloud uh, that uh, addresses this uh, very space. And you have, you know, the major telcos, you know, Telefonica, right. AT&T, uh, Vodafone, uh, uh, Verizon, they're all, yeah. you know, looking to capitalize on this. And I think one thing that is very important to understand here and why they're uh, doing this is that, you know, they have expertise in this area. They right. own the spectrum. They know how to optimize uh, MIMO implementations, how to optimize, you know, radio uh, networking and so forth. And so this gives them the opportunity to you know, manage many of these services to, you know, work with organizations that aren't going to uh, be keen on doing it all by themselves, so, yeah. so to speak. Absolutely. And so there, there's plenty of opportunity here for the telecos to show off their skills and, you know, working with, the, you know, their major supplier partners to, you know, really, uh, you know, make this uh, more of an addressable market right. to take advantage of more opportunities. So, yes, uh, th- this is, again, a very good example of how the ecosystem uh, can come together and make a difference. Yeah. You know, you mentioned uh, Nokia and AT&T. I know they're two of the major players in the space. I came across some examples that I thought were interesting that would be interesting to our audience anyway <clears throat> of this in motion. Um, Edscom and Nokia installed a private network at uh, the Kimi Ring um, Arena in in Finland. It's the largest motorsports and events venue in Northern Europe. And they designed this network to help, as I mentioned earlier, augment media streaming and television broadcast services, but they also want it to help with their testing of autonomous vehicles and connected vehicles, which is really cool. So Edscom, the Finnish company, is partnering with Nokia and using the edge network and the computing infrastructure to be able to offer this in the stadium, which I think is kind of cool. Um, Another thing that I thought was really fascinating is AT&T has a partnership with... um, uh, They've built a private 5G network that's being used for the Ellison Institute, which is one of the first medical facilities in the country to use 5G to help advance cancer research. So, okay, so it's really cool to think about, you know, Industry 4.0 and, you know, better fan experiences, but cancer research, like, to me, (laughs) that's really cool. And, you know, what they're doing here is, 
the doctors want to be able to use the network to collect and transmit data from patients to connected devices. So doing a better um, monitoring, a better process of monitoring patients, being able to deliver better care, being able to detect more rapidly, that sort of thing. So I think we're going to see this expand beyond, you know, what our purview is of, you know, in, it's not just industry 4.0, it's so many other things that benefit so many other enterprises and initiatives that benefit from pri private 5G networks. And I think that's really why we're expected to see such growth in this market that you just touched on. Excellent examples. Excellent use cases, Shelley. And yes, Nokia has over 300 customers already and is considered the market leader from a you know, supplier perspective in this uh, segment. And Ericsson, for example, acquired CradlePoint uh, last year for $1.1 billion to catalyze you know, their uh, pursuit of this uh, market opportunity. And yes, I, I think we're seeing all kinds of uh, great uh, ecosystem collaboration uh, that uh, that further validates your point, Shelley. Uh, for example, we've seen Verizon Business and AWS uh, partner to support Corning and its smart factory implementation. And that is, you know, using those smart sensors and uh, robotics. Uh, so this is, you know, kind of uh, futuristic uh, minor, minority report type scenarios actually uh, becoming real uh, today. Uh, so this is definitely, I think, uh, something that will pick up even more momentum. And I had mentioned uh, that there was a scoop last week, and it's still, you know, a, a scoop-like aspect here, and that is NTT is, I believe, the first CSP to offer uh, private 5G networking as a service. Uh, so now it's uh, not just a managed services proposition. You can actually go onto a portal and order up this entire capability uh, through uh, a operator like NTT. Right. And they're using their patent pending micro slicing technology to enable this breakthrough. So we're seeing a pattern here once again in Japan as being you know, the citadel of uh, innovation and breakthrough when it comes to you know, 5G uh, networking, open RAN capabilities, all the moves that Rakuten uh, did at the beginning of August, et cetera. So uh, again, this is just adding fuel to to, you know, why, you know, uh, private 5G is such an attractive uh, offering and why it's different from previous private networking implementations, which were niche, uh, which had, you know, a kind of a limited uh, market appeal. But now it's really opening up and broadening because 5G is becoming more mainstream. Everybody's becoming more familiar with its capabilities, taking advantage of the lower latency, higher bandwidth, better security uh, capabilities. And so this is just uh, good news all around.